Scientists have spent decades preparing for next week's solar eclipse, but they're not the only ones getting ready. Millions of tourists are expected to flood small towns along its path. In 2015, one man's job was to travel the route just to warn townspeople and businesses of what's to come. <laughs> the event begins in Oregon on Monday and will reach South Carolina in less than two hours. The South Carolina State Museum will celebrate the eclipse's final moment in the U.S. on Monday morning. Mark Strassman is there with more. This is one of the top three most visited public observatories in America. And come Monday, this telescope will be focused directly on the eclipse. On a typical day, they get between 300 and 500 visitors here. On Monday, they're expecting 10 times that number. And crowd control will be an issue all along the eclipse's path. You don't usually see crowd control roadblocks at a museum. But on Monday, this observatory will be overrun by thousands of Eclipse fans coming to see the stars in the middle of the day when temperatures are expected to be in the 90s. We'll have Band-Aids, we'll have additional water seating. We actually are bringing in misting tents and fans as well. The Eclipse will travel almost 2,400 miles across the U.S. 12 million people live in the totality zone of complete darkness. But 10 million visitors are expected to squeeze their way into the Eclipse's path. With populations expected to nearly double, cities and towns are redoubling their efforts to get ready. If we're gonna run out, I'm sure we're gonna run out of stuff. This Idaho market is already seeing a run on bottled water and other basic supplies. We're hoping we can get shipments every day to keep up with the demand that we're gonna have. There's gonna be a lot of people coming through town. While the eclipse is 70 miles wide, many of the roads people are using to see it are narrow just two lanes in some rural areas. My biggest concern is emergency vehicle access. With the folks that we expect to come to this eclipse, uh, we are really concerned about just getting to our emergencies. The eclipse will last only about two minutes, but if you're planning to see it, you should plan for a much longer visit. The best thing to do is give yourself plenty of time, enjoy it, and then give yourself time well after it's over as well. So many people hoping for their glimpse of the eclipse, Anne-Marie and Vlad, that on Monday, South Carolina's National Guard will be on standby. And in Oregon, the governor's taken it one step further. They've already activated that state's National Guard. All right, Mark Strassman, we thank you. As we mentioned, countless scientists will be collecting data during the eclipse on Monday. It is a rare opportunity for astronomers and the science community to learn about how the solar system works, especially the sun and what they call space weather. And here to talk all things eclipse is NASA's Associate Director for Science, Dr. Alex Young. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Young. So listen, you know, Vlad and I would just sort of look up at the sky and see something kind of interesting and think, how much can you really glean from that? But what sort of research is NASA hoping to pick up during that very, very short time frame? Well, there's actually two types of, uh, of science that we're doing. One is looking at the sun itself and the sun's outer atmosphere called the corona. So in that brief moment of totality, we can actually see the sun's faint or out outer atmosphere, which is where all of space weather is happening. That's where all the activity is occurring. So that's a unique opportunity during the eclipse. But the fact that it's happening across the whole country means we can actually take those observations across the whole country and turn a two minute observation into an hour and a half. But also, as that shadow moves across the country, it changes the clouds, changes the amount of light that reaches the ground, and it affects our atmosphere. So we can study it from the ground looking up, but also from space to understand how that shadow is changing our atmosphere, giving us an opportunity to do a grand experiment to study the Earth's atmosphere in a way we normally wouldn't be able to do. In fact, everyone in the U.S. who is going to see a partial eclipse can be a scientist of NASA using our Globe Observer program and help us capture data about the temperature and cloud changes and be a NASA scientist for a day. Wait, how do you do that? Do we just, do we get online? So, mm -hmm. Yeah, so go to either, you can either use Android or iOS, go to Globe Observer search for that app, download it, it's free, and then you can help us take data during the day because the partial eclipse lasts for many hours. 
Um, we don't want you to miss totality if you're in the path, but you can help us gather this data and do as, this fantastic experiment we're able to, to accomplish because of this eclipse. So Dr. Young, this might be a silly question, but what happens if it's a cloudy day? No such thing as silly questions, right? <laughs> well, you don't know my mom. There is no such thing as a silly question. <laughs> well, if it's a cloudy day, you're certainly, uh, if you're in the path of totality, that's gonna you know, be unfortunate in terms of being able to look at the sun, but the whole environment around you is changing. So you still get to experience that and you're still taking data even if there's clouds there that's telling us what's happening. So it's, it's okay in terms of the science, but it's also still an experience even if we don't get to see the corona itself. So we've done a few stories about people buying glasses, special glasses, some of them might be good, some of them might not be that good. You know, what's the safest way to observe this? Well, the safest way to really see what's happening on the sun is to use safe solar viewing glasses. Now, these are not sunglasses. These are hundreds of thousands of times more uh, light blocking, but uh, they're ones that we have certified with our partners um, that are designed especially for looking at the sun because even a partially eclipsed sun is just as dangerous as looking at the sun itself. So that's very important. So you can go to our website under our safety section to find out. But if you don't have these glasses, you can use indirect methods. Uh, you can just take a piece of paper or cardboard and make a hole in it and that makes a pinhole which projects an image of the sun down on the ground and you can see it go from being a circle to a crescent as the moon moves across it. But you know, you can even use your hands to make your own little pinholes. And in fact, leaves on trees do that. And they actually cast this really cool effect around you as you see all these images of little crescent suns. So uh, Dr. Young, before we let you go, how will the International Space Station be involved? Oh, that's a great question. So the International Space Station will be flying over the, the North American continent and part of the U.S. during this, this uh, eclipse, and they'll be looking at images of the shadow as it moves across the country, but they'll also be taking images of the sun and the corona. So they're gonna get uh, an amazing, amazing view that many of us would love to have. All right, Dr. Alex Young, Associate Director for Science in the Heliophysics Division at NASA. As always, we thank you, sir. Thank you very much, and clear skies to you. Yes, clear skies to you, sir. And don't miss the solar eclipse on Monday, August 21st, when CBS News will have special live coverage of the event as it happens. Is that how NASA scientists sign off? They don't say I, bye or thank you? I think they maybe like uh, clear, skies. clear skies to you. <laughs> Indeed.